Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up 76. Nasdaq up 36. S&P's up 8.5. Crude oil. We had a draw of a million barrels. I thought that was going no what was that yeah i thought it was going to go the other way right it's, because they're supposed to draw three million so let's pull up uh let's pull up the top live i think they're gonna have it yeah they were looking for a draw of three to four million the draw comes in where are we crude oil here we go so there's your number crude inventory is falling one million barrels gas inventory is falling 1.58 expectation uh there you go bloomberg is looking for a drop of four that should have had uh so there's let me get this right no, I missed it. I'm, I'm doing it backwards. There's more oil than the market anticipated, so there's going to be cheaper prices, right? So the market did react correctly in terms of that fall. So the market goes from right at 57. We spiked to 56.46. We're sitting at 56.60. Now, I took a quick peek at these. We had what was kind of cool is we're sitting at 57. We had optionability right at 57 for bullish exposure and bearish. If you wanted to get both of these sides of the trade, yeah. so you just trade volatility, to get exposure until noon, you were looking at about $50 for both contracts combined, which represents 50 cents of movement you need. We got 50 cents of movement in about three seconds. If you want exposure till 2.30, now interesting here that even though the stock market's close at 1 o'clock, right. looks like oil futures, they're going to be trading until 2.30 as normally. And um, that trade, and you also have $3 of potential movement on either side, that was going to cost you $38 on each side of the trade, or s about 75 So 50 okay. bucks, That's which seven. means 50 cents on the noon, or 75 bucks, which is 75 cents by 2.30. And, um, you know, if you made that trade, you have to be pretty excited that you got 50 cents of movement in the heartbeat oh, yeah. coming off those numbers. Especially after a day like yesterday, because yeah. yesterday started off a little bit slow, and then all of a sudden it just got hammered. Man. Sure, yeah. yeah. And so there's all the numbers coming in, as in crude. Only a decline of a million barrels. They were thinking you'd see a decline of three, maybe four if you went off the survey number. Right. Gasoline, decline of 1.5. Estimate had been a decline of 2.4, so similar story. More gas than they thought. Um, and breaking that down, but we'll see how that oil market reacts throughout the day. I love it. Yeah, man, got to love it. And speaking of commodities, one check back on the oil contract. Uh, quite a five-minute bar we had on that news. You dropped from 57 all the way down to 56.19. We're sitting at about 56.48 on a bounce on those oil numbers. Maybe some cheaper gas to go along with cheaper money. Yeah. Low interest rates, cheap gas. What that, could be better, man? That's, that's <laughs> kind of like cynical as in, folks, Gas does not tank. Interest rates are not at zero as the market goes to the moon. Okay, that's that's not how things usually work. All right, you know, if 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 factories and everyone's using oil and everybody can make money because they can use money, then interest rates would be higher and oil would be higher, and so we'll see what happens. But it, I know interesting I, nonetheless, you know, man. It is. Imagine being a professor right now, and if you know, in a financial class. Yeah, it's yeah. it's I mean, you know, there's it's just pretty tough. So there's so many variables. We all know the variables. But which ones are the most important ones the market's considering? That's yeah, what you got to What is the market going to pay attention to? Exactly, totally.